after setting up my styles up here at the top and uh, going through some of my text here and applying those styles to my headings, the next thing I may want to do is I, I want to add some numbering to these headings so that as I work through my document, they're numbered as one or 1.1 1 .1, and these appear in the navigation bar at the side. The way to do this uh, is I want to apply something called a multi-level list. This allows me to be able to add numbering to those different levels, such as heading one under at the top and heading two, which is nestled underneath that and so on. Up here at the top, I've got a few options around the bullet points and the numbering around here. The thing that's worth noting is that these two look very similar. So I've got usual numbering, which allows me to create a numbered list. That's not the one I want. The one I want is, the, is to the right of it here, the multi-level list. It's really easy to get these mixed up. I, I accidentally press on the wrong one all the time. So I like to just hover over it to make sure I've got multi-level list. When I click on that, I then see a range of options, including some of the numbering I'd like to do. I want to use this numbering format here uh, that allows for one for my top level heading and 1.1 for a subheading underneath that and so on. I've got two options here, however, that look very similar. This option at the bottom is the one I want because this automatically assigns uh, the numbering to my headings. So every time I continue to add more of my heading one style or my heading two style and so on to my writing, it will automatically add the multi-level number to that as well. So I'm going to click on that. Uh, and what that done is that's automatically updated my styles to add the numbers to them as well. I notice up here in the styles at the top as well that it's updated the preview for my styles with that number to show me that, that it knows that it's going to automatically add, add that each time. Uh, down here, I'm about to start my chapter two. Uh, so uh, if I actually set this as heading one, it will automatically uh, continue the numbering. So my first section over here is, is section one, and it knows this is section two, uh, and it will continue on. So the next thing I may need to do is add some additional pages to my document. So in this example, I want to add a title page and then some forward pages, including my table of contents, my abstract, my acknowledgements, etc. To be able to add extra pages as I'm going to use some breaks in Microsoft Word. Before I do that, uh, what I'm going to do is uh, on the Home tab, I'm going to go over to this symbol here, this paragraph mark symbol and click on it to turn it on. This allows me to see all of the hidden formatting in my document, including any breaks that I insert to see that I've put them in the right place and to help me play around with the formatting to make sure I've got it right. What I'm now going to do is I'm now going to go up to layout and choose breaks. This will allow me to add some extra pages in, but I've got two different types of breaks. I've got page breaks, these three here, and I've also got section breaks here. These are slightly different. Page breaks, as it says there, allows me to just mark where the end of one page is, create a new page and continue the, the text on another page, all part of one section, just breaking the text up. Section breaks are slightly cleverer. They allow me to tell the document where one section ends and another section begins. By breaking my document up into sections, it then allows me to change the formatting in each of those sections. For example, what I'm going to do is uh, change the formatting of my numbering from my forward pages, my table of contents and abstracts, etc., to Roman numerals. Whereas I want my chapter to start again in, in the usual format at number one. So by inserting sections, it allows me to do that. My very first page, I'm going to insert a title page. I actually want that to be the first section all on its own because I don't want any numbering to be on there. And I actually want my numbering to start on the second page. So I'm first going to insert a section break. Uh, and because I've got paragraph marks turned on, this allows me to see uh, that I've inserted a section break here. I'm just going to uh, give this just a label that I can go back and edit and make it look nice uh, later on. I'm just going to mark that this is my title page. I'm going to go back to the to the top of this page again to be able to insert another another page break. I've already inserted a section break. So at the end of this page, 
the document now knows that I'm starting a new section. For my next few pages, so my table of contents, my abstract, etc., uh, I kind of want them all to be the part of section two of the same section. So I'm actually just going to insert a page break instead at this time, just to create another page. So here, uh, this may be my table of contents page. I'll give that a label. And again, I might insert, um, go to layout and breaks again. I'm going to insert another page break uh, and give this a label um, as my abstract page. Finally, I'm going to insert my acknowledgements page, but the, at the end of this one, I want this to be the end of the section, the end of section two of my forward pages, and my chapter is then going to be the next section. So again, I'm going to go to layout, but this time I'm going to choose section break. And this, this now has added a section break to the end of this here. So as I can see now um, that my title page ends with a section break, I've got a few pages here all part of that section and they then end with a section break. I might want to add some other pages in there and then I've got the start of my chapter. Now that I've got my sections in place, I can now insert my page numbering um, and, and have a place so that my page numbering is different for those first few pages and then starts again at the beginning of my first chapter. The way I want to do this is I need to, I'm going to insert it into the footer of my document. By also uh, looking at the footer as well, it helps me to see the different sections. There's two ways I can get into the headers and footers of my document. I can either go down to the bottom of a page and double click, or I can right click and choose edit footer. This opens the view to allow me to add things into the headers and footers of, of my document. What's also really handy is that because I've told the document where there are some section breaks and some different sections, it's giving me labels for that so I can see that clearly. So my title page here, it can see that this is section one, because I then inserted a section break, it can now see that these next few pages that were separated by a page break are all section two. It means that now in section two, I can insert some page numbering that's different to the rest of the document. I actually have to work slightly backwards here due to how the setting works with linking it to the previous one. So I'm actually going to go to the, pot to the bottom of my second page here to insert a page number. I'm not going to start at the beginning. On the design tab of my header and footer, I'm now going to insert a page number. So I go across the page number here uh, and I'm going to choose the option at the bottom of the page and I'm just going to insert this one here for an example. You'll see that it's inserted the number um, number two because this is the second page. But actually, I want this to start again and I want it to look slightly differently. The first thing I have to do that's really important is by default, even though I've put sections into my document, Microsoft Word thinks they should all be linked and joined together. So any numbering that's put in is continued throughout the whole document. In this case, I don't want that to be the case. I don't want it to be linked to the previous section. So up here at the top, Currently, this option for link to previous is selected and highlighted in dark gray. For any sections where I don't want it to be the same as the section before, I need to click on that to unselect it. So it's now not linked to my title page, that first section. So now um, I can format this so that it looks right and starts at the right number. There's two ways I can get to do this. Uh, I either want to click onto the number so that it's highlighted in grey and then carefully hover over and right click and choose format page numbers. The other way I can do it is by selecting the number in grey and again up on the design tab going again to page number and choosing format page numbers. Here this now gives me a few options. I can change about with the number format. So for these pages in my forward pages, I want them to be Roman numerals. So I'm going to change it to that. And actually, I want this to start again as a, as a new section. So I'm going to change this radio button here to start at one. 
So when I select that now, uh, my my numbering here starts again at one. If I go up and have a look at my footer section here, uh, it's added a number in. That's OK. Because this is a different section, I can remove that uh, by using the backspace. Uh, and my numbering in the second section is still there because I've told it it's two separate sections. If I now go down and have a look at the header um, here in my uh, at the bottom of my chapter one, it's continuing. So I need to do the same again. Uh, so I'm going to uh, highlight the number, right click on it, format page numbers, and then I want this to start again at one. But this time I want my normal foot number format to stay as it is. So now, as I've updated that, uh, my new uh, section here, section three, starts again at one. I now want to insert uh, my table of contents. So I'm going to close my header and footer. Uh, and then on this table of contents page here, I'm just going to turn off my paragraph marks so I can't see them now. Um, and it's on this page um, that I'd like to insert my table of contents. Because I have uh, used uh, styles and I correctly added them to all the headings in my document, I know that because by opening the navigation pane here, uh, I can see all of those uh, and how they appear as the navigation in my document. I know that when I create a table of contents, it's going to include all of these, including the numbers. Uh, so it's quite easy to add a table of contents. I'm going to go up to references at the top and right across here at the side, I've got this option for table of contents. Um, I could choose one of these automatic options here, but I'm actually going to choose the custom table of contents. Here, this allows me to see a little bit more uh, about what's going to be added. Because I've used some different headings, I've used a couple of headings uh, for, for notifying which are maybe my table of contents heading and my abstract heading. It, I've done that because it might be that I don't want my table of contents heading to actually appear in the table of contents. It doesn't need to be in there twice. So what I can do is if I go to options at the bottom here, I can now see which of my styles will be included in my table of contents. So my abstract he header will be included. Uh, it might be any that I don't want to be included in my table of contents. I can just remove the number out of. Um, so again, I don't want my table of contents to appear in there, so I can just delete that out. So now when I press OK, it's going to insert my table of contents, remembering the correct page numbers that I've added uh, and only including the headings that I've told it to include. If I was to go and add uh, uh, another chapter here, Uh, and add some more information to my document. And um, I'll notice that if I go back to my table of contents, it's not yet included. It doesn't update automatically. If I've added more text or made some changes, you need to remember to go back to your table of contents and update it. There's a couple of ways I can do this by just clicking over it. Because it's an automatic table of contents, it's highlighted in grey when I click on it. That tells me that it's an automated field, that it's doing something clever in the background. Um, I can either right click or on the references tab up at the top here, I have this option to update table. By pressing on that, it gives me a couple of options. I can do it so I just update the page numbers if I've made some changes or move some things around, or usually this option to update the entire table so it'll take any changes to headings or anything and include those as well. So when I press OK, it's now updated it to include my new chapter title that I've added there.